Would you believe it's midsummer and absolutely chucking it down outside. I'm so glad I built that barbecue last week. Anyway, I'm back in the workshop today and I'm getting more and more frustrated that every horizontal surface is absolutely covered with materials and bits and pieces. And although my workshop shelves here have done really well over the years, when I say workshop shelves, I mean IKEA bookcase, I think it's time for a bit of an update. So that's the project today, to build a new set of workshop shelves. And because of the cost of timber these days, to do it as economically as possible. So keep watching to see how much I can build out of one sheet of half inch ply. I'm going to be very roughly basing the new set of shelves on the existing, but there's some things I don't like about the existing, so now is a good time to change. Firstly, this is a really narrow set of shelves, and I said it's actually a bookcase. The internal measurement is 360 wide, so I've always felt that it's really narrow, so I'm going to be doubling that and making it a lot wider. Conversely, the depth of this shelf is actually more than I need. So what I've found is I've got tools and equipment behind those in front, which is a real pain because to get to those, you have to take the front ones out and then get to the back one. So it's actually deeper than I want. And measuring it, it's 270 millimeters deep. And I don't actually need it that deep. So I'm gonna make it a little bit shallower because I'm also thinking about cost of materials and doing everything as economically as I can. With regard to the height, I'm fairly tall, so I'm quite happy to reach up to sort of 2.2 meters. So to make the cutting as easy as possible, I'm gonna keep it as one sheet of ply high. So I'm actually gonna have an eight foot set of shelves, which suits me and the size of this workshop. Now, with regard to these connections, my intention is to route out just a few millimeters at each shelf position. So the 12 mil ply for the shelf actually sits slightly into the sides and I've used that before on my storage container cabinet and it worked really well and it gave me really strong connections so that's the system I'm going to stick with so time now to I think cut down some ply and get on with the build this single sheet of 12 mil ply has been kicking around the workshop for a number of months now and you may have seen me use it a few times as a temporary bench so it's marked and it has some holes, so using it as workshop shelves is a fitting end for it, I think. As a guide for the saw, I'm using an offcut of MDF pinned in the middle just to stop any flex. As the ply is overhanging the bench here, partway through the cut, I stop and clamp the ends together. This helps support the strip when I get to the end of the cut. I'm cutting it lengthways into two 200 mm strips for the sides, a 700 mm strip for the shelves, and the leftover strip, which will be around about 114 mm, I'll use as a center strengthener. A 700 mm wide shelves in 12 mm ply, I think could sag over time. With all the cutting out the way, I lay out both 200 mm side pieces next to each other and line them up with the side and end of my workbench, which I know is exactly 90 degrees. I'm going to be routing both of these together for the shelves to fit in, which will ensure the grooves end up at exactly the same height on both. There's obviously an offset between the router frame, which will be running along my straight edge, and the router bit. So to find out what that is, rather than trying to measure it by hand, I route a short groove in an off-cut piece of timber, which I can then accurately measure. This measurement for my router is 38 millimeters, so I can add that to all of my lengths from one end of the side pieces. Routing both sides together really does ensure that the shelves will be level, even if your measurement for the height is out slightly and it obviously speeds up the whole process. Each slot needs a quick clean up with some medium sandpaper and then it's just a repeat for each shelf position. Talking about shelf positions, I've just laid these out so I've got larger shelves at the bottom and smaller at the top, but it's really up to you. So 
So just while I'm having a break here, I just thought I'd talk a little bit about routing these shelves in. If you don't own a router, this is still completely possible. All you do need is a piece of batten glued and screwed to the side of the shelving system for your shelf to sit on. That's very, very simple. If you do own a router, it's amazing how just a two or three millimeter routed slot can give that shelf really something nice to sit on. You don't want to route too deep, else you start taking away strength from the side of this shelving unit. What I will be doing once I've finished doing this routing is gluing and screwing these shelves in with just a couple of screws in the back there. Now for many years I didn't own a router. I bought this one only a couple of years ago and it was the cheapest one I could find on Amazon. And this is a Katsu router. There's lots of these clones out there, cloned on the Makita style, starting only £35 or $33 in the market. Are they as good as a Makita or DeWalt? I guarantee you they're not. But if you're new to routing, or if you're only going to use it a few times a year, I would definitely start at the budget end and see how you get on. This one's been working fine for me for the last couple of years, and you can buy attachments to it, and it just works like any other router. So long may it continue. I finish the routing with the very top section and then move on to cutting my shelves. The 700mm width section of ply will ensure that each shelf is exactly the same width. To now cut each to exactly 200mm depth to match my sides, I decide to make a simple jig. So I accurately cut a 202mm length of off-cut timber. The additional 2mm is to allow for the kerf of my blade and screw it to another block, which sits just over the end of my ply sheet. Before using it, I mark a line just to check that the dimension is correct. I can then push it tight up against my straight edge guide and cut away. I've got 10 of these to cut, so making a quick jig really helps speed things up and ensures each shelf is exactly the same size. I can then marry up all the shelves with one of the sides. Before gluing and screwing, using my workbench surface to ensure that everything on the front face is flush. You'll also notice for this, I put some paper between the shelves and my workbench. It's quite embarrassing to glue up something like this, only to find out later that it's also nicely bonded to the workbench. This ply has a good face and a not so good face, which I've orientated upwards. So I work out the height of my eye level and decide to turn all the shelves above that point upside down. So in the future, when I'm looking up at the shelves, I only see the better side of the ply, even if my tools and materials have to put up with sitting on a slightly rougher surface. Sorry about that, tools. One advantage of using half inch ply is that it's much more flexible than three quarter inch. So getting the second side on and all lined up is very straightforward. I then start cutting my last 114 mm wide strip to make the center supports. I line these up with the back of the unit here on the top. This will give each shelf support in the middle and just over halfway from front to back, which I think will be plenty to stop any of the ply shelves sagging. I've now glued in these middle strengthener pieces and it's amazing how ply really takes to wood glue. They're absolutely solid and there's no other fixings in there at all. Having said that, I probably don't need much fixings anyway. I cut them fairly tight and with the weight on the shelves they'll only ever tighten up so I don't think they're going anywhere. So I've just cut some right angle brackets here. I've got four of them. I'm going to be putting them halfway up and at the top. I've just put them in the corner here 
and use them to fix the shelf to the wall. And because I'm putting them in the middle and at the back, it's going to give it huge rigidity. So the shelf system isn't really going to be able to go anywhere. Because of that, you don't actually need a backing to your shelves. You don't need it for stability. And if you're putting it against a wall, then really the, the back of the shelves can just be brickwork. However, having said that, I've got some three or four mil ply here, and it's pretty much rubbish ply that something came delivered in at once upon a time. You can see that actually there's footprints all over it, so I've just used it as a surface, and it's not really suitable to make anything out of it. It's pretty rubbish ply, and now it's just really getting in the way in my garage. So rather than cutting it up for firewood, I think I'm going to trim it to size and pin it on the back of my shelves. So the shelves are complete and in place and I've screwed them to the wall so they're absolutely solid. They're not going anywhere very quickly at all. On this section I actually boxed it in and made a bit of a cover for my camera and recording gear just to keep it further away from the, the dust and the sawdust and just made a bit of a shelf with some stays here as well. As for offcuts from that single sheet of ply, this is what I've been left with. I've got some slithers of ply here. This is a little bit annoying. I didn't expect to have such a large piece left over. I could have had another few square inches of shelf. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel and please subscribe. So for another job done while it was raining outside, I'll see you next time. Really upset about that actually. <laughs>